I want a solar generator that is extremely portable, but can also run the essentials of my house, such as a well pump, fridges, freezers, lights, fans, Wi-Fi, and more. Getting a unit that's both portable and powerful enough to run my house is a very difficult task. But Jackery reached out to me and said that they have a unit that should be able to accomplish that, and that's what I want to look at. The Jackery 2000 Plus is a very portable solar generator that can have up to five expansion batteries per unit, and it can link two units together to provide split phase power so that it can run a whole house. Jackery is very focused on beginner friendly systems that are all plug and play. This includes having their own solar panels, which are also very portable and fold down to be very easy to move around. Their solar panels have special cables and connectors that are simple and easy to use in order to take away any questions on how it all goes together. I'm going to put a simple Jackery 2000 Plus system to the test using one main unit and one expansion battery along with one 200 watt folding solar panel and see how well it works to run my fridge, freezer and other appliances in my house as if the grid power was out. I also have a special house transfer switch that will allow me to run vital circuits or critical loads either off of the Jackery all the time or off of the grid at any time that I choose. That means it would help save money on my electricity bill while also backing up my essential items and it would already be off grid. This is a manual transfer switch that was included in my kit in order to make life easier with backup power. What I wanna know is, will it work for a power outage? Will it charge quickly off of solar every day? How do I protect it from an EMP attack? And will it work for my RV since my RV is part of my bug out plan? Personally, I've always appreciated how good the customer service is at Jackery. I've been using Jackery for over five years and they've been around for about 12 years. And in my entire time of working with them with different units and so on, I've never had a problem with customer service. They're always quick to respond and answer the phones. I'm also going to test to see how well the Jackery 2000 Plus works with other solar panels besides the folding 200 watt Jackery panel. I want to make sure that this unit will charge quickly and that I can use any equipment that I want with it so it's more adaptable for different situations. I use a lot of solar generators all the way from very small units to systems that can run an entire house. In fact, right now my entire house is off grid using a solar generator. So I really wanna see how the Jackery 2000 Plus feels in terms of backup or off grid power. To see what systems I often recommend or use, visit poweredportablesolar.com or you can shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com. My first impressions of the Jackery 2000 Plus are very positive. I pulled the system out of the boxes and was happy to see that they are very aware of the necessity to package the equipment with lots of padding to keep it safe. I couldn't wait to get the system out and start playing with it, so I didn't read the user manual or anything, I was just too excited. But to make sure you're aware of all the specs, the Jackery 2000 Plus has a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter that can go up to 6000 watts for its peak. If you have two of them together, then it can continuously output 6,000 watts and its peak output would be 12,000 watts. Inside the main unit, there's a lithium iron phosphate battery that's LFP or sometimes called Life PO4. Bottom line is it's rated to 4,000 cycles and it's going to easily last over 10 years of constant use. Most people will not constantly use their battery, especially if it's for backup, which means you can expect it to last much longer than that. Now, each battery is 2,000 43 watt hours or basically two kilowatt hours that includes the expansion batteries it's also two kilowatt hours per battery and the jackery 2000 plus has a 1400 watt solar input and that's split between two different solar inputs each one can do up to 700 watts and one thing i found really interesting is that the jackery 2000 plus does not have a built-in ups function so ups is a full pass-through design this does have AC bypass, which does mean it can wall charge and output at the same time, but it's rated up to 1400 watts output. One of the ways Jackery tries to keep the system really user friendly and very simple to use is they mark which side of the battery expansion cable goes where. There is an A side and a B side and they need to be plugged into the correct positions. The markings are on the cable as well as on the unit and batteries and if you tried to plug them in the wrong way, it simply doesn't fit. The 2000 Plus has four AC outlets on the front to make it easy to connect up to 420 volt appliances, but I'm gonna plug my fridge into the Jackery 2000 Plus to see how long it will run it. But that's easier said than done because of how my fridge is set up. It is a pain in the neck to pull this away from the wall. And if I were using this for backup, I would have to do this every single time, which could get really annoying. But I eventually got it connected to the Jackery right about 6 p.m. 
Now there is an easier way to run the fridge without having to pull it out and connect it directly to the unit. And I'm gonna show you that here in just a minute. It makes it so much easier. I didn't connect any solar panels or wall chargers to the Jackery at this time. And I started at about 68% state of charge. I was extremely happy to see that I was able to run the fridge for nearly 24 hours before the main unit hit 1%. That was at 4 p.m. the next day. But the thing that happened is the main unit drained down to 1% and the expansion battery was still at 28%. I thought the system was going to die, so I connected the wall charger to the Jackery 2000 Plus main unit to see how well it works while charging and running a vital appliance at the same time. It worked perfectly fine, no problems. I talked to customer service about the issue of the state of charge being different between the main unit and the expansion battery. They explained that that's really normal when you're using the unit for the first few times, and that as you cycle it, it'll begin to balance out and charge and discharge more equally. And I did see that later on where I only had about a 9% discrepancy rather than a 27% discrepancy. But my biggest concern was, could I still run the main unit if the expansion battery had power? And the answer is yes. I like that I can easily check on the app how things are charging as long as the unit is connected to Wi-Fi. If I were using this as a backup system for long term, I'd connect my Wi-Fi to it as one of my main appliances or devices to always power up off of it. That way I could always monitor it from anywhere. Within the app, I can also change how fast I want the unit to charge up. I also wanted to see how well the 2000 Plus would run my laundry, so I did a load on the washer as well as on my propane dryer, and it barely made a dent in the battery. Keep in mind, I still don't have any solar panels connected to it yet. If I'd had solar panels connected, then I should be able to continue running my stuff off of it while getting a charge into the battery because the solar is doing the majority of the work. And since it is running my main appliances just fine, I want to see how well it does with solar charging. I have their Solar Saga 200 watt folding solar panel, as well as my own 400 watt residential solar panel. I have my patent pending solar panel legs on this 400 watt panel, and I'll have a video about that as soon as possible. Regardless, it'll be available at poweredportablesolar.com. The Solar Saga 200 watt folding panel is pretty easy to set up. But keep in mind that when the solar panel is cold, the material doesn't like to unfold easily. But if it gets really cold, the panel will pretty much stay closed on itself. There is a solar site on the edge here, and if you can get the shade from the dot centered into the white circles, that means that you're perfectly lined up with the sun and you're gonna get optimal charging. For now, I can only get it to hit the edge of the inner circle, and even though it wasn't perfectly centered, I was still getting 92% efficiency on the output, which is really high, especially for a folding solar panel, because it's most common to get about 80% output from your solar panels. So kudos to Jackery for having really good working solar panels. But you need to be aware that the Solar Saga solar panel only has two legs, even though it has four sections. It basically has four 50 watt panels. The two middle sections will sag down a little bit once the material has warmed up. I didn't notice that this caused any problems with charging though, but just be aware. The Solar Saga solar panel uses Jackery's proprietary solar cable, and it's only about 10 feet long. Because of that, I had to keep my 2000 Plus outside and really close to the solar panel. You can even see I put the case for the solar panel right on top of the system to help keep it in the shade. You can get longer cables directly from Jackery, as well as adapters to link multiple Solar Saga solar panels together to get higher solar input. But they also included for free as part of the main system, an adapter that will allow me to use other solar panels as long as I got an MC4 to eight millimeter adapter. Specifically, it's a DC7909 to MC4 adapter that I bought on Amazon, and then I use that with Jackery's adapter, and then I can plug it into the main unit or the battery. I'm really glad that they did this because I already have a lot of solar panels, and I prefer to use my own panels whenever possible. Some people will want Jackery's portable solar panels, but it's just how I am. I want more traditional panels with traditional connectors so that I can use them with different things. But if you need portability, then I would go with the Solar Sagas. They work well. I did find that I couldn't get the full 1400 watts of charge speed. I even tried solar charging and wall charging at the same time. And the most I could ever get was about 1100 watts of charge going in at once. That's a bit frustrating to me because it's advertised as 1400 watts. 1100 watts is still pretty good, but there is a special trick in order to get more solar input. 
and that's by using the expansion batteries. See, what Jackery has done is something that really all other solar generator companies need to be doing. The neat feature that Jackery included is that each expansion battery has the same solar input as the main unit. So every battery has the same 1400 watts of input, which in real world usage is probably about 1100 watts. So with my current setup, I can have up to 2200 watts of real world solar input, which means I can charge this whole system in about two hours. That's comforting to me that if I'm running my two refrigerators, freezer, Wi-Fi, fans, lights, and so on, that I can get a full charge in a single day while still running that equipment. If I were to expand this system with five expansion batteries, I'd have up to 6,600 watts of solar input, which is absolutely insane for a system of this size. That's super powerful. Then if I double that to two Jackery 2000 plus units, five expansion batteries on each, we're talking 13,200 watts of solar input at real world charging rates. I would need tons of cables to make that happen and a lot of solar panels. But the bottom line is it's doable. And that's what Jackery was trying to show is that you can have a system light enough to carry around and put in an RV, or take out with you camping or anything like that. But then you can also bring it home and have a large enough system to run the essentials of your house by plugging in to the main electrical panel, either using an interlock switch or their special transfer switch. Now with my setup, the Jackery 2000 Plus and one expansion battery is light enough for me to pick up all together and move around. I would prefer to be able to wheel them around like this you see here, but the battery expansion cable tends to drag on the ground quite a bit. The battery cable sticks out about 18 inches from the back, so be sure to check how much room you need for your unit for wherever you're gonna be using it and storing it. It's annoying that it sticks out so far, but just like how you can see behind me, the reason it's that long is so that way you can put these side by side instead of stacking up or down, which is really good for RV, van life, that type of use. Or if you wanted to fit this underneath a bed or somewhere inconspicuous, so it's not taking up a bunch of space. That's one issue that I've had, for example, with the Delta 2 Max from EcoFlow, where they put the battery connection. I have to set them up like this if I want them side by side. I can't have the fronts equal. They have to be off-centered because the battery cable is on the side. So basically, it's either vertically stacked or stagger stacked. There's not really another option. With the Jackery, I can go in any direction and it works well. Now, if I wanted to, I could take this transfer switch and install it in my house and have certain circuits already running off of the Jackery 2000 Plus, basically already off grid. The cool thing about the transfer switch is that I can choose whether it's on grid or running off the Jackery. So at any time I can be saving on my electricity bill as well as having my essentials backed up. Now, earlier I showed you how my fridge is a real pain in the neck to get pulled out. So this is where this would come in handy is I could have my whole kitchen backed up on one circuit and then the Jackery can then plug into that transfer switch and I would not have to run any extension cords in order to get my fridge running when the grid is out. All I'd have to do is make sure I turn on the system, plug in to the transfer switch, flip it to the generator setting and it's running. That's it. The only downside to using this transfer switch is it only works for 120 volt power. That means things like my well pump or my electric dryer, I cannot run off of this transfer switch. But that's where having two Jackery 2000 plus units comes in because I can get their split phase adapter with the two units. And then I use my existing system like what I'm doing right now. So I have an interlock switch on my house that allows me to supply 240 volt split phase power and that means that I can run my entire electrical panel and I can run everything in my house up to the rated output of the two Jackery 2000 plus units, which is 6,000 watts. So I could run an air conditioner. I would definitely put a soft start device on it, but I probably wouldn't want to do that just because it's so power hungry, it's gonna deplete the system very quickly. The point being that I can use any outlet in my office. I don't have to run extension cords anywhere. The Wi-Fi is already working. The TV is already working. Fridge, freezers, lights, fans, everything's already working and I can even turn off stuff in my main breaker panel if I don't want it to turn on automatically. That's how I've been running my house off grid with different systems for a couple of months now is just using my interlock switch. The beauty is I have an electrician put that in and then there's no permits or anything. I can just be off grid. And with the 2000 plus getting two units, that's an option to be able to run my house just like what I'm doing right now. So I was able to get my work done on my computer in my office, run my refrigerator, run my laundry, run my backup fridge and freezer in my garage, turn on the Wi-Fi. I could do all of that off of the Jackery 2000 plus unit. 
So because I've been off grid with solar generators at my house for a while now, I wanna show you how I do that step by step so that way there's no question. It's very easy to follow. To see how I did that with another system, go ahead and click this video right up here and I'll show you how I was able to run off grid super easily. But if you wanna see how to go fully off grid without any permits required and literally be able to get some boxes shipped to you, put it together and you're off grid, then make sure you're subscribed because that video is gonna be coming out really soon and you won't wanna miss that. There's huge money savings in doing it that way. As always, be prepared. See you guys in the next video.